Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dev here and today I've got a very exciting video for you guys. We are going to be continuing on with Dynamo. I've got a very fun video where we are going to be looking at randomizing curtain wall panels. This is something I have to do quite a bit as a part one. It's actually a very good task in order to kind of visualize what's going on in Dynamo and getting used to it. So over here, as you can see, I've got this example where if I set it to automatic, we can see that all my panels on my wall have been randomized and the best part about this is that it's fully parametric, right? So let's say if I wanted to increase the wall here, well, if I expand it that way, you can see the new elements have now been randomized as well. Let's say if I wanted it to be, I don't know, a bit more blue heavy, well, I can just add more blue panels into it. There we go. And let's say I don't actually like this kind of randomization amount. Well, all I have to do is just go here and play with this slider and look how fast it's updating. So we're going to be looking at two examples in terms of type and instance space, which I'll cover both in this video. If you guys are new to Dynamo, I would recommend checking out my previous video where I explained a bit more of the UI, where I go over things at a bit of a slower pace. However, in this video, I am going to explain everything from the grounds up, assuming you are a Dynamo beginner. If you guys do enjoy this video, I would very much appreciate it if you can leave a like and let's get into it. Okay, so here we are in Revit and the first example we're going to be looking at is the type example. So what that means is my material of the curtain panel is actually changing by the type, right? So if I tab into one of these curtain panels, I can swap it here. So instead of it being silver, I've got the gold one and also I'm going to tab there for the blue one. So our very first step is to launch Dynamo. So you need to go to the Manage tab and then go to Dynamo under Visual Programming. Great. Over here, just hit New. And one thing I want you guys to know is that if you're working on a small dummy project like this, I'd recommend putting it in automatic mode so you can see these live updates. If you're working on a heavy file or you're actually running the script in a project, make sure it's in manual mode just so, you know, Dynamo isn't collecting too much stuff and it's quite simple, right? Otherwise, it's going to slow down Dynamo and your project quite a bit. So the first thing we need to do is select all the panels within this wall. And the very first step to do is just right click in here. I'm just going to write select model element. And now what we're going to do is we're going to hit select. And now I'm going to select the hosting wall, right? So here, if I hover over this element and I pin it, you can see it says we've got a wall, right? Over here now, what I want to do is I want to actually get all these um, curtain panels that are hosted on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write over here the word panel. And now the node that I want is called curtain panel by element, right? And here you can see if you hover over it, it says get all, panel, get all panels of a curtain wall system or slope glazing roof. So I'm just going to click on that and then we're just going to input this element into the hosting element and there you go works as you expect we can see we have all of our curtain panels there right so this is everything that's hosted in the wall now what we want to do is we want to get all of these different family types or these panels and put them into dynamo to now work with our script and say hey these are the inputs these are what i want you to replace them with so what we're going to do here is just write the word family types so we can actually select the specific family types and then over here i'm just going to Click on it here, I'm just going to write the word C for my curtain wall panel, as I remember for my family. And then I'm going to select the blue one first. Then I'm going to control C, control V, this node, copy and paste. Do it one more time because we have three panels. And now I'm going to select the gold one and then the silver one. Okay. So now these are all of our individual family types. What we need to do is we need to group them together into a list. So what we need to do is we need to go up here and I'm just going to write the word list. And then the very first node you get is list create. So now once you click on that, you can see it's only got one input. What we need to do is we need to click on this little plus icon two more times, one, two. And now we can input our family types into this list in order to group them together. The list does always start with zero, just keep that in mind. And now if I click on list and I click on the output, you can see we've got these family types, right? These are the family types that we're gonna, that Dynamo is gonna use in order to populate the types in the rest of the wall. So now if I go to my curtain panel here, what I need to do is a bit of math, right? So over here, we can see that we've got, if I zoom over this, we can see we've got 48 elements here, right, on our list. But over here, we've only got three curtain panels that we've generated. So what we need to do is we need to generate more of these panels that we've decided as an input to match the amount of panels that are hosted within this kind of, to match the amount of panels that are hosted within the curtain wall. So what we need to do is we need to count how many elements are in this uh, hosting curtain panel. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to go here, I'm going to hit the word count, or write the word count, sorry. And I want this count inspect list. So once we do that, you can see once we input curtain panel into this list, it's going to tell us we have 48 here that we can now use in a calculation. And what we're also going to do is com control, copy and paste this, sorry, see it, control, copy and paste this node. And now we are going to push this into there. And now you can see it says there's three nodes as an input. So now a bit of basic math, what we need to do is just write divide here. 
There we go. And now it's this forward slash icon. And now, as you can see, what we need to do is we need to input 48 to the top one and 3 to the bottom one. And now it tells us, hey, you need to repeat your list 16 times in order to get the correct amount of elements generated for you. So what we need to do is if I go here, if I, were, if I write the word multiply, right, it's a star icon. You can see if I go here, if I input my list item here to the bottom one and then I put 16 in there, if we get a number, you can see we've got nulls, right? This is because you can't multiply this random amount of elements by 16 by using this way, okay? It's expecting a different input. As you can see, it's expecting a number. So what we need to do is we need to delete this and we need to go here and we need to write the word cycle. This cycle, as you can see, if you hover over it, creates a new list by concatenating multiple copies of a list. So what that means is if I click on this here, if I click on double and I go to amount here, there we go. So we're going to duplicate whatever we have 16 times. So now if I input my list here, you know, the list of actual panels instead of the actual number, there we go. You can see our panels have cycled 16 times. So these three panels, 16 times, gives us 48 panels, which is the correct amount of panels that we need in order to fill our curtain wall, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag all of this down below just to make it a bit neater and same for this thing here. And now what we want to do is we want to shuffle this, right? The whole point of the script is to give random elements. So what I want to do is I just want to go here and I just want to write the word shuffle. And if I input the first one, you can see we have two here. If I just do shuffle here and I input my list there into list, you can see our list has shuffled nicely, right? However, we don't really have a lot of control over this. It's just going to shuffle it randomly for us. Or I mean, shuffle is random, but we might want a bit more control. We might not like this exact uh, result that it gets. So if I delete this node and I do shuffle, the one that's expecting a list and a seed, if I input list into list again and I click on the output, you can see it's still expecting a seed, right? So this is, we're expecting a random number. So what we're going to do is just want to go over here. I'm just going to write the word integer. And then we've got integer slider, right? This thing slides from one to 100. And now if I input zero into here, you can see we've got a specific shuffled list. But maybe I don't like this one. Well. Then I can just slide this across and I can see that it's going to shuffle it randomly even more so you can see which kind of shuffle variation you like. This is something that's very nice in this sh uh, shuffle node. And now all we have to do is override these panels with these ones. And all we have to do is just go here and this is a very important node that you have to get comfortable with in Dynamo and it's called set parameter if you just write that. And it's the first one, set parameter by name. So there you go, just click on that one. And for our elements, we are going to do all of these curtain panels here. So I'm just going to input the curtain panel there into the element. And now what we're going to override here is the actual type of the family, right? Like I said, the colors for this um, specific example are driven by the actual family type, uh, this thing here. So what we need to do is we need to double click in order to get a code block up. And now what you want to do is you want to write brackets. You want to write type with a capital T close bracket, no, sorry, close apostrophe. And then what you want to do is a semicolon to end it as an input. There you go. And now what you want to do is you want to connect this one to the parameter name. There we go. Because this is the type of overriding. And as you guessed it, we want to ride, override these panels with this list here in terms of the values. Look at that, it changes. And this is the best thing about this script. If I now change this here, look at that. You can see it's changing. And the whole reason we've done this count part, as I mentioned before, is if I go to my plan here, if I override this, so if I made these panels, you know, this curtain wall longer, as you can see, my panels have updated to 64 and three. I actually have 64 on my um, you know, panel in terms of how much it counted. So what we have to do is we actually have to round this number up. And you guessed it, all you have to do is just write the word round here. And what you want is the actual math um, ceiling node. So it's gonna round it up. There we go. And now for our number, we're just gonna input 21 and then you can see it runs up to 22. And now this is the number that we're gonna input into cycle. There we go for the amount. And now it's generated 66 panels, but that's fine because a few of these will be discarded, but at least now all of our panels are covered, right? So there we go. We have all of this now. And now, we, like I said, we can continuously change it. So that is the type example. Okay, so for my instance example, all I'm gonna do is I've just swapped all of these panels to the instance based one. So as you can see, I've only got one type, however, the material is controlled by an instance parameter, right? So I'm actually gonna use the same script that I made before. 
And over here, what I've done is I've just frozen the set element parameter and I've made this go into run mode. Uh, to be honest, I can just freeze it and leave it on automatic. That's equally fine. And for my host, I'm just going to select model element and choose this wall instead. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to see all the panels that I get here. And now I'm going to show you a little bit of debugging in Dynamo, right? So if I maximize this, if I go here, if I write first item, if I want to kind of work with something in a list and see all the parameters it's got, instead of working with 48 elements, I can just work with the first one. And now I want to see all the parameters that I can change in this item, right? Dynamo has a very handy node and that's called element.parameters. There we go, it's the first one. And now if you click on that and you push this in here, there we go. If I see this output, these are all the things that I could change. And here you can see it gives me a bit of information. I've got the area, the category, I've got the family type and name, and then I've also got the type name, which I've uh, done before. But now what I want to override is the material, right? So silver, because this is the actual material name that I want to do. So all you have to do now is just go back and delete this. And instead of actually giving it, you know, the actual family types, all I have to do here is just let me delete this. If I know what my materials are called, and I know they're called, um, what's it called? I know they're called gold. And remember to always input, um, end your input of text um, with the semicolon and you can contain it within the, um, what's it called? Within the quotation marks. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do gold. Copy and paste this. Silver. And I also believe the last one is called blue panel and now instead of actually inputting family types I'm just inputting names here right there we go silver and blue panel there we go and instead of uh, overriding the type what I'm going to do is I'm going to override the word material here right because this is the parameter that I'm changing remember that's what I saw before now if I unpin this right so here's my um, instance if I unfreeze this look at this it's saying that my parameter is expecting is not a string well I can't just input the material name right it's like before what I have to do is if I go here if I go here and if I write the word material there we go if I do material by name so what we're doing is we're actually getting the actual material in Revit so I'm going to put gold here there we go and now what I'm doing is control C V V And now all I've done is I've actually gotten the material, right? So instead of it being like me saying gold, I've actually now gotten the golden material. As you can see, it's actually returned us back a material. And now what I'm doing is I'm gonna plug material into item zero, one, and two. And now look at this. Now our things are changing by instance. And same as before, if I just go here and change it, there we go. We can see everything's driven by instance instead of our type. So I know this was a little bit of a longer tutorial, but I just want to explain a few basic things here in terms of, um, setting it out by types and setting it out by choosing different materials, you know, something that's instance and type. And also the fact that sometimes you might not uh, be able to actually input just the actual strings here, or these are called the strings in terms of words, you might have to actually return an actual material, right? Because obviously me saying this is a gold panel is very different to me actually selecting the gold material that Revit recognizes. So yeah, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did and you find the script useful and you learned something new, I would very much appreciate it if you leave a like. And that's it. Take care, guys. Cheers.